Hey everyone, it is great to see you all again. Have you been exploring the masking tool in Lightroom and are wondering if there are any ways to bring that skill to the next level? There are certain situations, for example, when using the select subject mask where you may want to only affect part of your subject. Maybe brighten the highlights or add contrast to the face of your subject. Well, in today's video, we are going to dive deep into intersecting masks so you can add all of those fine adjustments you'd like and take your editing skills to the next level. And stick around to the end where I show you a useful trick when using the select sky mask to ensure that you get a perfect mask every single time, like this. I hope you all enjoy. My name is Jalen Oban. I'm a landscape photographer and educator based in the Pacific Northwest. I create weekly videos giving you photo tips or taking you with me on location to give you a behind the scenes look at what I do. If you enjoy the content, I would really appreciate it if you gave it a like and subscribe. So what are intersecting masks? Well, as the name implies, this allows you to intersect one mask with another, giving you the ability to apply adjustments to a selected part of the original mask. You can do this by selecting a mask like select sky or select subject, and then using another mask to intersect them using this feature. Where the two masks intersect is where the effects will be applied. You can also use the O key or check this little box on the masking menu to show the mask. You're also able to change the color of the mask overlay if desired. One way you're able to use these masks is when dodging and burning, or brightening the highlights and darkening the shadows, adding contrast and depth to your image. And if you're wondering why not just use the contrast slider that Lightroom gives you, you can check out my other video where we take a deep dive into dodging and burning, what it is, and then why it's so much more useful than using just that slider. I'll have that linked above if you're interested, but don't forget to come back to this video when you're all done. Instead of having to painstakingly paint in all of your shadows and highlights, what you can do is create a luminance range mask and adjust your selected range so it targets just the highlights and shadow range you want. You can also feather this effect to create a softer transition. But what if I only want the effect to be present on certain parts of my photo? Maybe I don't want brightness at the edges of my photo or just want to dodge and burn the subject. This is where using an intersecting brush mask can come in great handy. First, head over to the mask that you just created, right click, intersect mask with, and brush. Now you're able to brush over only the parts of your image you want to apply the effect to and not have to worry about being super careful with going outside the lines, if you will. So what are some practical examples of this? Well, one super effective way to use intersecting masks is when editing your sky. One thing I like to do in most of my photos to create more drama or bring back detail in my sky is to darken it down. However, when you use only the select sky mask and darken the sky, you create a very unnatural looking sky from the bottom. To fix this, we can select and darken our sky and then intersect mask with a linear gradient. By holding shift and dragging down the linear gradient from the top to the bottom, we create a very natural looking darkened sky without affecting the foreground. Another way you're able to achieve this is by selecting and darkening our sky and then subtracting a linear gradient mask from the bottom. Try for both of these techniques to start the linear gradient from the very top or the very bottom of your photo. This will create the most natural and soft looking effect that we are after. You can also use this technique to post process different parts of your sky separately. Say you wanted to apply different effects to the bottom of your sky and the top. You can create a sky selection, intersect mask with, linear gradient, and drag from the bottom or the top to create a new mask just affecting that region. I like to darken the top and brighten or warm up the bottom of my sky. Building on this, what if you have a person or a subject in front of the sky you want to affect? Using the select background tool and intersecting this with a linear gradient allows you to apply effects naturally to the sky or background without affecting your subject. You can use this to create depth and contrast by brightening the side where the sun was shining and darkening the opposite. Like this, where the harsh sun was already brightening the car enough. By selecting the background and intersecting with a linear gradient, we can drag this from the left hand side and add some dehaze or exposure. Do the same for the right hand side, but darken it down and there you go. But what if we're having trouble getting a clean mask when we're using the select sky or select subject? Whether this is because there is a piece of hair blowing away from your subject's face or trees that stand out in the sky above the horizon. You wanna make sure that you're only selecting parts of your image that you want to apply the effects to. The trick to fix this may sound a little silly at first, but I promise you it works. What you can do is, like normal, create a sky or subject selection, and then intersect the mask with the same mask you just created, a sky mask for the sky or a subject mask for the subject. For some reason, this tells Lightroom that its original mask isn't good enough and it goes back to refine its work. 
interesting, right? So I hope you all learned something from this week's video. If you didn't already know, I started a Discord server for the entire community to come together, share photos, and give feedback. And then at the end of every month, I'll be selecting one of your photos as a monthly contest winner. Other than that, if you could subscribe to my weekly newsletter for weekly updates, and then for vlog, blog, and other video updates, if you could like and follow my Facebook page. Other than that, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.